Hello and welcome to Saturday Agenda. I'm Peter Van Onselen. Well, the events in Norway obviously put into pretty clear perspective the insignificance of some of the debates we have domestically when you see tragedy like that. But that said, here on Saturday Agenda, we are going to focus on the domestic context and the ongoing debate here in a policy sense is splashed across the front page of, uh, of the broadsheets today about business leaders turning the heat up on the Labor Party. We'll be talking about that as well as obviously the carbon tax more broadly and some divisions inside the Liberal Party it would seem with a speech late in this week by Malcolm Turnbull imploring his colleagues not to be seduced by the sceptics in relation to climate change. To discuss all these issues I'm joined as I am each week by regular panellist Dr Greg O'Mahony. Thanks for your company. Pleasure Pat. And to start the show we'll be talking now out of Perth to Senator Matthias Cormann, the Shadow Assistant Tre Treasurer. Senator Cormann, thanks for your company. Good to be here. Can I go straight to uh, Liberals seethe over Turnbull's carbon stance? That's the headline in today's Sydney Morning Herald and it reads that senior Liberals have accused the front bencher Malcolm Turnbull of making a gratuitous and unhelpful intervention in the carbon tax debate. Do you think that he's been gratuitous and unhelpful like senior Liberal colleagues of yours? Well, I've had a very close look at what Malcolm Turnbull had to say on Thursday night, and uh, everything he said was entirely consistent uh, with coalition policy. So you're, so you're uh, at odds. So you're at odds with the senior liberals that are reported in Lenore Taylor's article in the City Morning Herald. There's division between you and them. Well, as, as far as I'm concerned, the coalition is united in our opposition to the uh, Labour Party carbon tax because it doesn't do anything uh, for the environment, yet it would hurt household budgets and it would hurt uh, the economy. And, and, and Malcolm Turnbull and the coalition overall uh, is very much at one in relation to that. So when Malcolm Turnbull is, is imploring some of his colleagues to believe the scientific consensus and not be seduced by scepticism in relation to climate change. So when he's essentially whacking former colleagues like Nick Minchin of yours, uh, you're on Turnbull's side on that particular stance? Well, I mean, the coalition accepts the science. The coalition accepts that we uh, need to take strong action on climate change. Uh, the coalition doesn't accept that Labor's carbon tax, uh, which will push up the cost of everything, which will make Australia less competitive internationally, sure, which will sure, hurt small business. Sure, sure, but we're talking here about the science Without of carbon all tax. Of that, yeah, but all, all of that, well, but the important, well, this is the point. The, the answer there is we accept the science of, of uh, climate change. The debate that we're having in Australia uh, between the government and the coalition is a debate about what is effective and what is ineffective effective action on climate change. But you'd have to concede, and policy Sen just Senator, you'd have to concede though, surely, that, and there, this is the case on both sides, I accept that, but I'm asking you about your party, that there, is, there are sceptics and senior sceptics within the ranks of the coalition. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that Nick Minchin was the most senior liberal in, in your part of the parliament, the upper house, and he is an avowed sceptic about climate change. Well, the coalition position is very clear. We accept the signs of climate change. Uh, we accept that we've got to take action. Uh, we are committed in a bipartisan way to the 5% uh, emissions reduction target. What we're saying is that the Labor way will just shift emissions overseas. It will hurt people in Australia without helping to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions, whereas we have a policy, our direct action policy, which will reduce emissions in Australia in a way that achieves a net reduction in emissions for the world. Senator, you say that, but, but you'd have to accept that at the moment Tony Abbott spent hours each week discussing climate change. He wouldn't spend 10 to 20 seconds talking about the science of climate change. When you say you accept it, you do it incredibly silently and very much on the quiet. No, well, well, that's actually not right. I mean, clearly the debate over the last two weeks has been very much focused on the government's announcement. I mean, after uh, five months ago, Julia Gillard said there would be a carbon tax uh, after her promise before the election that there would not be one. Obviously, it took five months for the detail to come out. Two weeks ago, the detail came out, and we've been spending the last two weeks uh, talking and scrutinising uh, the government's announcement. Uh, but, I mean, it's very clear we do have a very effective alternative strategy in place. We have an alternative, a, a, a better policy in place. Uh, to reduce emissions in Australia in a way that helps reduce emissions in the world. Can, can uh, I ask, so, that, Senator, I mean, to, to interrupt, can I ask, do, do you think uh, Barnaby Joyce is out of line when he says that Malcolm Turnbull needs to exercise a bit more quote-unquote self-management? Look, I mean, at the end of the day, we, we have got a job to do, and that is to uh, continue to uh, expose the absolute uh, ludicrousness of the government's policy. And, and clearly, all of us should focus on, on exposing the flaws, the deep flaws in the Labor Party policy, uh, rather than to focus, focus on ourselves. We have a very so clear policy, which is a more effective... 
Well, I mean, I, I just I think that my statement stands by itself. Uh, we have a very clear policy uh, which is focused on reducing emissions in Australia in a way that helps reduce emissions in the world. Uh, the Labor Party has got a policy which will put pressure on the economy, put pressure on household budgets, and all of that without helping to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions. Labor's policy will make uh, polluters in China more competitive than even the most environmentally efficient uh, business here in Australia. That is not effective action on climate change. That is an irresponsible act of economic self-harm. Okay, I want to move on to what the business leaders are saying in a moment, but just one final question on this though, Senator, because I understand that obviously you're not going to want to talk about divisions in the coalition, but you say on one hand, which is the same thing as Tony Abbott says... We, we are have, very you united, have... Peter. Okay, we are well, very well, united. Let me put this to you then. You say that you have no problem with what Malcolm Turnbull has said. Uh, that is what Tony Abbott said. Yet, on the other hand, not just unnamed senior Liberals like in the Lenore Taylor story, also on the record, Barnaby Joyce has said that he thinks that Malcolm Turnbull should exercise more self-discipline or self-management in his comments. That is at complete odds with you and Tony Abbott saying that you're fine with what he had to say. Look, I let, I let uh, my very good friend and colleague Barnaby Joyce talk for himself. And, uh, I mean, I think it's very clear that the Labor Party uh, has put forward a carbon tax, uh, which Julia Gillard be promised before the election we wouldn't get, a carbon tax which will hurt household budgets, which will hurt the economy, and all of that without doing anything to help reduce global greenhouse gas emissions. I mean, that's just crazy. And that is not something that is in the national interest. OK, well, we'll move on now. Um, appreciate your tolerance with those questions. Uh, Business turns up the heat on the ALP. That's the, effectively the headline on, uh, on both broadsheets today. Uh, you must be heartened to see that there is this idea coming from business leaders that there is a whiff of illegitimacy about the government uh, trying to pursue some of its policies. Well, I mean, th this is a very serious issue. We've got a government that is completely incompetent, which is led by a prime minister that's completely out of her depth, uh, that is uh, completely captive... Uh, to Bob Brown and the Greens. And, and I mean, this is bad for Australia. Like, to sort of see what's happening to Australia right now uh, is of deep concern to us. And it's, it's quite unprecedented for senior business leaders to come out uh, like they have uh, today and in recent days uh, to, to point uh, to these sorts of issues that we've been pointing to for some time. Business recently, particularly in recent years, has tended to, to when you look at political donations, largely donate equally between both sides of politics, in a sense, try to have a, a bet each way. Uh, would you like to see, quite seriously, would you like to see business donate far more substantially to your side of politics if it's going to be making rhetorical commentary like what we're seeing reported in the newspaper? shouldn't it uh, stump up and be donating more significantly to your side of politics than Labor? Look, I let business make their own decisions as to uh, how, how they uh, want to uh, make their financial contributions. I mean, that is uh, their right in a, in a democracy to make these decisions. But, but the point here, though, is that we do have a government uh, that has uh, you know, stuffed up again and again, that has uh, mismanaged our finances to the point where we now are looking at $107 billion worth of government net debt and rising after some of the recent announcements. A government that constantly is casting around for more cash, uh, adding new ad hoc taxes one after the other. Uh, a government that has mismanaged whether it is the pink bats or the overpriced cool halls or, or the border protection fiasco or the uh, life cattle exports fiasco, you name it, the carbon tax. I mean, wherever you look, there's examples Senator, of a government that doesn't think things through and that doesn't uh, know how to manage the affairs of government. Senator, that all rolled off the tongue pretty uh, readily. <laughs> I think you, you, you've said that before. C can, I, can I get you to focus on, on the actual comments of some of the business Sadly, leaders? Sadly, I have. <laughs> so, so some of the comments of the business leaders yesterday, that they, they went beyond talking about the relationship between business and the government and, and were very political in their rhetoric, talking about the circumstances in which Gillard took control, the fact that she never explained to the people why Rudd was axed. Do you think that's an appropriate thing for big business in this country to do? I, I can't remember a time where, where business leaders were that political in, in entering the debate. Well, well I, I don't think that they've made that decision lightly. They're clearly deeply concerned about what is happening uh, to uh, our country, to the economy, to government uh, in, in Australia. I mean, this is not something that I would imagine they would be doing uh, lightly because it does obviously come with risks uh, for business to, uh, to get themselves involved in this sort of debate. The fact that they have done so should give you an indication as to how concerned they are as to where the economy and where the country is going under this bad government. Senator, I understand that the Expenditure Review Committee of the Opposition met uh, at the end of this week, um, and I assume as Shadow Assistant Treasurer you are part of that. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, to check, what's the rationale there? Is this uh, an example of Shadow Ministers coming through to have to find cuts to achieve some of your spending targets? What was the discussion at the ERC? 
Well, I'm obviously not going to talk about what the discussions were at the ERC. Peter, you very can't blame me for trying. I mean, this is, this, is, this, is, this is obviously part of our ongoing uh, process. We've, um, f ever since we lost the election in 2007, uh, we've been working up uh, a comprehensive set of alternative policies. Uh, we are doing everything we need to do to make sure we stand ready as a credible alternative government, as, as, a, as a team uh, with the policies in place to provide a good government for Australia. C can I ask uh, on that policy development, Senator? You, you talk about developing a, a, a right raft of, of, of strong policies. I think you could definitely say the coalition did a very good job on mental health last year, on really anchoring a, a very well received policy that was clearly thought through in some detail. The criticism this year has been very much the opposite, that it's just negative comment after negative comment, very little in the way of policy development. Um, if it is true that a lot of time is being put into policy development, it is fair to say we're not seeing a lot of the fruits of that. Well, I disagree with that. I mean, if you look at uh, Tony Abbott's budget in reply speech, there were 20-odd uh, policy announcements or policy initiatives uh, listed in there. I mean, if you, I mean, mental health is clearly an area where Tony Abbott has provided strong leadership, but uh, the area of workforce participation, improving uh, productivity and competitiveness in the economy uh, is an area that he's taken a very strong interest in and where the team uh, has done a lot of work. And, and there's many other areas uh, in relation to uh, small, small business and others that we've, that we've already put policies out and there will be more coming. On that issue, I mean, a, a genuinely non-combative question, I guess it's a political strategy yeah. question, is that if there's a lot out there in a policy sense, and there's certainly more out there in a policy sense than, than I think that the public realise, but it doesn't get the airtime because obviously Tony Abbott's attacks on the carbon tax, which he has to do, and, and that, that, that is his role <coughs> as opposition leader, as someone who strongly opposes the carbon tax, to, to go down that path. But how do you, how do you manage uh, at least the perception, if not the reality, uh, that there is a policy vacuum on the coalition side because the media naturally gravitate towards the strong negative commentary about the carbon tax? Well, I mean, there's, there's a time for everything. I mean, right now, this government is so bad that we do have a job to do to expose the deep flaws in this government. And, and I mean, you can't scrutinise the activities of a bad government without being seen to be negative. But by the same token, there is a lot of work going on developing a, a, a very positive and strong alternative policy agenda. And in good time, as we get closer to the next election, uh, you know, these uh, initiatives will progressively be released and, and no doubt generate public debate. Okay, Senator, one final question before we let you go. Uh, in an article in The Australian, which, disclaimer, was, was an article I wrote, uh, I spoke to the former Federal Privacy Commissioner Malcolm Crompton, uh, who was very critical of voter databases. I know that the Liberal Party has the database feedback, Labor has the database Electrack. His argument is that if there wants to be, if, if there is to be any discussion about media and privacy and so forth on the back of the News of the World scandal out of the UK, disclaimer, Sky is one third of one third owned by News Limited. If there is to be any discussion like that, his argument is that it should also start with a discussion about removing the exemption that exists from privacy laws that allow parties like yourself uh, and the uh, Labor Party to operate these invasive voter tracking software. Do you agree with the former Privacy Commissioner? Well, firstly, a disclaimer, I'm sitting here at uh, News Limited headquarters in Perth as I'm speaking to you. So just <laughs> I'm to sure you're not representing News Limited, and, and, that's and, it. And, 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 the sec and the second point is that I thought it was entirely inappropriate for the Prime Minister in an attempt to divert attention from her failed campaign in favour of the carbon tax to link uh, the reprehensible events in, in the UK with, uh, uh, you know, with uh, the, the media uh, landscape here in Australia. Clearly, what happened in the UK is illegal over there and it would be illegal here in Australia. Now, in in response to your question, uh, yes, uh, political parties in Australia do have access to the electoral roll and, and they do uh, use that uh, in, in the context of political And they campaign. do get an exemption that is, that is, from privacy laws and, too. And, and, I know, and, I, and, I know, and I know that you wrote your PhD in relation to this, uh, uh, Dr. Van Onselen, but uh, um, look, I mean, that, is obviously, that is obviously consistent with the current legal framework. If there was any change down the track, obviously, I mean, we will always comply uh, with the law as it stands. But, but, that's, but, the, but uh, that's the point, Senator, you don't. Because because you've exempt, exempted yourself. Well, we well, well, you only comply with the law because you guys write the law, and in writing the law, you exempted yourselves from the Privacy Act. Well, I mean, look, I mean, that'd be like uh, me uh, saying you, that you, I comply with burglary laws after exempting myself from the burglary. It's a pretty laws. convenient law. <laughs> I, I, I did, I did, I did, I did read your uh, your piece in the Australian <laughs> this morning, and and you mentioned the Australian Law Reform Commission review, which was of course initiated uh, by then Attorney General Philip Ruddock, and which reported under this government. This government hasn't taken any action in relation to the many recommendations in that report to improve privacy laws. Uh, we now understand that opportunistically, in the context of recent events, uh, they have decided 
later to start uh, uh, sort of reinvigorating that deb debate again. We will be participating in the debate on how privacy laws can be uh, improved, but really, uh, you know, it will be interesting to see whether the government will do any more on this uh, once uh, this sort of issue has died down. All right, Senator Matthias Cormann, Shadow Assistant Treasurer, joining us out of the Sky News Studio in Perth. We appreciate your company. Good to be here. When we come back from the break,